As usual, this is a disclaimer. All shown ethical hacking and cybersecurity tips on this channel are for educational purpose only. Do not use any technique or method shown here on networks or machines that do not belong to you. Otherwise, you may expose yourself to legal actions. Hello and welcome to this new video of cybersecurity. We are going to cover password cracking and how hackers process to put hands on passwords and crack them. So we are going to dig together most of the techniques used by hackers to crack passwords. Hackers aim to figure out passwords because passwords are the most common form of authentication used to protect access to systems, accounts, and sensible data. By obtaining a valid username and password, an attacker can impersonate legitimate users, gain entry to networks and databases, and potentially access a wide range of sensitive or valuable information. There are several motivations behind password cracking. The most common include financial gain, stealing money from bank accounts, or selling access to compromised accounts on the dark web. Identity theft using storing credentials to impersonate individuals and commit fraud and corporate espionage, stealing sensitive business information or trade secrets. Other motivation may include revenge, making a political statement or simply seeking recognition within the hacker community. To crack passwords, hackers use a variety of techniques and tools. If we dig inside those techniques, here are a few of them. Dictionary attacks, where hackers use lists of common words and passwords to try and guess the correct password. These lists often include passwords leaked from previous breaches, making them highly effective if users reuse passwords or choose weak ones. The brute force attacks technique is where attackers systematically try every possible combination of characters until they find the correct password. While this method is guaranteed to work eventually, it can be very slow and resource intensive, especially for longer, more complex passwords. The rainbow table attacks technique is where hackers use pre-computed tables of hash values to quickly look up passwords that correspond to stolen password hashes by passing the need to crack each hash individually. The credential stuffing technique is where attackers take username and password combinations obtained from one breach and try them on other websites, exploiting the common habits of password reuse. The password spraying technique is instead of trying many passwords on one account which can trigger a lockout, hackers try a single common password on many accounts before moving to the next password. Hackers also use specialized software and hardware to automate and speed up the attacks, such as tools like Hydra, John the Ripper, Ashcat, and many others. These tools can leverage powerful GPUs to attempt millions of password guesses per second, making even moderately strong passwords vulnerable if not properly protected. Understanding how hackers crack passwords help users and organizations implement the stronger security measures usage, such as using unique complex passwords, enabling multi-factor authentication MFA, and monitoring for suspicious login attempts. Alright, so now we are going to demonstrate how to crack a password by breaking inside a Windows 11 session that is having a local user. We are going to build a little lab by creating a virtual machine of a Windows 11 and we are going to use Kali Linux to try to break into the local account we will create on the Windows 11 instance. To do so we need to download an ISO image of Windows 11. So for that open your favorite 
web browser and in the server we are going to tie windows 11 iso so we are going to download the iso image from the microsoft.com so at the microsoft website i will scroll down a bit then i find download windows 11 disk image iso for x64 devices this is perfect and the drop down menu i will select Windows 11, which the edition ISO for X64 devices, and then I will click on the frame button. Then I will be asked to choose the language of the ISO. So I will take English and confirm. So now I have a link to download the ISO. I need to click on the button 64 bit download, and then I can finally download the ISO file. I will wait for it to download. This may take a bit of time according to your internet speed. So the file has finished downloading. I can check my ISO file win11.24h2english.x64.iso is ready to use. So we are going to create a virtual machine with virtual box. As you can see in my virtual box, I have already a Kali Linux virtual machine. You can look at the video description. There will be a link to the video that shows how to create a Kali Linux virtual machine. So I will not be covering this in this video. So to create a Windows machine, just click on the new button. And here in the virtual machine assistant, we need to give a name to the virtual machine. So again, let's keep it simple. I'm going to call it Windows 11 Lab. Then I need to specify the ISO image that I just downloaded. I'll go get ISO image. And then all the other options seems to be correct. Windows, Windows 11. And we will skip the unattended installation as it is a cybersecurity lab. So for the hardware, it has given the default requirement for gigabytes of memory and two cores of processor. In my case, as I have a lot of resources I will increase this to 8 GB and 4 core processors just because I can do it. It is recommended to keep this box to enable EFI and I will increase the hard drive size to 180 GB. But anyway, the 80 GB already predefined my virtual box are enough. I will click on finish and then I will check the display where I need to activate the 3D acceleration and increase to the max the video memory also very important i'm going to change the network well uh, not not immediately let's first uninstall it and then we will set up the network so i will click on ok and now i will start the virtual machine All right, this is the information assistant of Windows 11. So we just need to answer the different questions and go to the next steps. So language is English, time and current format is English, that is fine. Keyboard is English, okay. You can change it if it's different for you. And I would like to install Windows 11. I agree everything will be deleted, of course, I do. Next, so here I do not have a product key, so I will just click on, I do not have a product key. This doesn't matter, it is a virtual machine for a lab purpose. We are going to delete it at the end of the lab. So I don't really need a product key as I am not going to use this every day. So I will install Windows 11 Professional. Okay, so this is the agreement license. I must accept. Okay, the assistant have automatically detected the hard drive. I just need to do next. And at this step, I just need to click on install and then we need to wait by way so for some reason it's the information crashed so i had to restart the virtual machine this can happen sometimes so don't worry about it okay here we are so now we are in the assistant of windows 11 and just need to again answer a bunch of questions so i will keep united states I will keep the US keyboard layouts. I don't have a second keyboard, so I will skip. All right, so now we need to give a name to the device. I will call it W11. Okay, so now it's asking me how I would like to set up this device. Set up for personal use or set up for work or school. Set up for work or school. 
So let's go for this option. This step we are going to click on sign in options and here we are going to select the main join instead. So we are going to type my name and define a password. So I am going to define the password that the password cracking software will try to figure out. I will confirm the password. There are three question security questions to define but this is no matter so I will type anything. So the privacy options we do not need any of them so i will turn them off everything and then accept window 11 has finally booted up so let's check okay so we need to install the host tools best tools to do so i need to go into the device menu and then click on insert guest additions cd image nothing happens obviously but i think we need to open the find explorer and go to the cd and as you can see the guest tools is inside the cd drive so i need to launch the vmux windows additions amd64 i need to accept the privilege escalation so yes and i just need to click on next next again install and we need to reboot the machine so that's fine click finish so here we are i will log in again okay so let's check if the guest tools are working by just resizing the window the windows desktop has resized we have the tools working we are going to make a little change in, into the device menu we go to share the clipboard and we will activate a bidirectional clipboard and we are going to enable the clipboard file transfers okay so our windows 11 machine is ready for the lab we are going to turn it off okay so now to, we need to do a little setup to the network so here we are going to change this to host only adapter and let's do the same for the other one that work host only adapter so i can now start again the windows machine and i will also start the kali linux machine right my kali password so here we are, the IAM ID for the lab we have set up. So in Kali Linux, we are mainly going to work inside the console. So I'm going to open the console and maximize it. We are ready to figure out on which network I am. I'm going to use the line command IPA. So here is the output. This is my IP address. And I know now that I am on the network 192.168.56.0. Zero. So now I am going to scan this network by using the command sudo nmap. So sudo is to get the super user escalation privilege and the nmap command is a network scanner. Multi proposed scanning tool. I'm going to specify the options dash is n and will provide the network address and I will specify the network mask which is by default always 24 and I will press enter. I will give the sudo password and let the command nmap scan the network. Okay, so the nmap report sent back three machines. So we know that 101, it's our machine, Kali Linux. Dot one is DHCP server. So we have here two more other machines, dot 100 and dot 102. Okay, so in this report, it is easy to detect which one is the window machine. It is not this one, because it is saying that it is an unknown device, but it's obviously this one, 102, because it has detected that it is a virtual box, so, the IP address of the window machine is this one. Okay, let's check if the command Hydra is installed, it is, let's check if there are word lists installed in the Kali Linux machine, before that I'm going to list the directory, ls, usr, share, let's see what's in there. Yeah, word lists, and we have a Rocku JZ file. So I am going to uncompress this rock cube by typing the following command sudo d 
US are share where this brought you. Let's check it now again. So the file is now available. So now let's try to break in the password of the Windows machine. To do that, we're going to type a command, Hydra, and we need to specify the machine IP address on the network. Let's go. So as you see, the attack has started. So please be aware that you should not do this on a machine that do not belong to you. You should know that this kind of attack will generate a lot of logs on the target machine and the IT department will figure it out. Especially if they have a cybersecurity department and using monitoring tools such as SCM or XDR, this will initiate a security alert immediately. Alright, after some issues I made some preparation and now I am going to launch the command again. So here we are. The command has figure out the password of the user of the local user on the Windows machine. And the password is hello. And it is exactly the password I defined on the other machine. So let's check it. I'm going to display the password. I typed hello. And it's working. Let's dig this out now. So if I bring back the command, you will notice that I have changed the syntax beside the first command we typed together. As you see here, we had to use the SMB2 protocol. And not only, I had to recompile the SMB library to be able to use it with Hydra. Also, I had to do a couple of things on the Windows side. So let me show you, I had to open the PowerShell as an administrator. I had to run these commands to deactivate the account checking and account deactivation. So if we come to the conclusion, there is a good news about the experimentation that with modern operating system like Windows 11, there are already multiple mechanics to prevent rating in with brute force. It's clearly been brute force won't work on system like Windows 11 uh, for account, locker account, penetration. Anyway, this mechanism can be used on old unprotected machines and old non-updated machines. This demonstration was just an impression of what can Hydra do because we can use it on multiple protocols in two different situations. You can simply type Hydra dash H for help. And you can see the multiple options you can use So again, as a reminder, please remember to not use these techniques on somebody's computers that do not belong to you. I am going now to terminate this video by listing the 9 most popular software for cracking passwords. So we have Hydra, the one we just tested in this video. Then we have Aircrack NG, John the Ripper, Ashcat, Medusa, OPH Crack, Rainbow Crack, Brutus, Fizz. Let me know in the comment section if you would like me to do a very detailed tutorial about how to use one of these tools. See you in the next video. To help this channel, please subscribe, activate the bell, like, and share this video. Thank you for watching.